Boom, we're here. We're here. Oh, hey. Intro music. Hey. Hey. That's good. Okay, we're going to jump right into it. If you're listening, rate, share, subscribe. You already know we want to connect with you. We're shooting heart laser beams at you. And if you want to watch the podcast, we have a great video. Um, Big Moo TV. Go watch it. Um, that's that. So we have Nikki Van Houten and Theo Cummings. Hey. The homies. Hell yeah. I don't know what we're going to talk about. We're going to go deep. <laughs> We're about to flow. Just flow. Go. But what we're going to start with, we have these cards laid out. I pull these cards every day. These are like and my, so do we. So, so do you. so perfect. Look at that. We're in a line. Well, so, <laughs> we, we do our best. <laughs> uh, you know how, there's no rules. That's the cool part. So I'm going to let you folks pull a card. Okay, we'll be quiet. Do your thing. I like to put my hands over the cards and feel them. Oh, I got the mouse. Ooh. Oh, the mouse. <laughs> Theo, pull yours. Don't know. Theo needs to pull his first, and then you reach. Firefly. You know, you know, oh, you know the signs and everything. Yeah. Word. The organization of the book. All right, mouse. Detail-oriented, small-minded, nitpicky, nervous. The mouse has an innate desire to tend to the details. It often spends its days fixing, preparing, organizing, and scrutinizing. Unfortunately, a mouse personality doesn't notice when they've gone too far. Soon they begin to have a limited and fearful vision of life and try to control every detail. This can be quite a painful experience for both the mouse and for those around them. When mouse energy is at play, step back for a moment. It may be time to find a more purposeful project to delve into, one that's worthy of your exacting eye. When in balance, organized, resourceful, prepared. When out of balance, busy with no purpose. To bring into balance a meaningful project. That resonates. That resonates? Yeah. yeah. Good. Huh. How's that showing How's up that in your life? Up? Wow. I just, uh, I, I actually am calling in more attention to detail. I find that when I'm not present, that it's easy for me to be scattered mm. and uh, actually not have attention to detail. Yeah, me too. You know? I'm a big picture person. I feel like <laughs> yeah, I'm like too. up in the I think the, the three ether. of us, yeah, that's I'm why we get along. Yeah, I'm a big picture. I like don't answer emails. And it's like, yeah. oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Word. Okay. What if someone called you mousy, though? Well, sometimes <laughs> I think I pulled a mouse. I, I pulled a rabbit the so other day, mouse. and it's like running away from everything. I was like, I don't think I'm a rabbit, but I guess it <laughs> fucking hits home a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Everyone's got a little rabbit. Yeah, it's, it's, they hit where they hit. You know. And I like the when out of balance, busy with no purpose. Because mm, I've always, um, definitely. I feel like in the past, I was always climbing this ladder, but my ladder was on the wrong wall. Like I was oh, getting far, but like I was doing a lot, but I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. getting anywhere. Yeah, it, there's, <laughs> there's something, um, <laughs> like, someone, uh, <laughs> Someone told me they were like, "Are you, I hear you saying that you're busy, but are you productive?" Mm. Yeah. There's a difference. Mm. Like I'm, I'm always busy, but am I always producing? Like being mm. effective. Being, it's being like effective. being efficient in the wrong direction. Yeah. Instead of effective in Definitely. the right direction. Definitely. I love that. Okay, yeah. do y'all find yours? There's a lot of animals. Mm-hmm. Every animal. What's your spirit animal, animal, Eric? I don't know. What animal do you resonate with? Uh, panther. The panther. Yeah, I feel like that's the coolest <laughs> animal ever. <laughs> that is a cool they animal. They can swim. They, <laughs> they can they can fucking climb trees and like carry shit into a tree oh and eat God. it in a tree. It's like savage. Tight. Savage. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be black. Any of the panthers are cool. Like big cats, I think they're the coolest yeah. animals. But like orcas too. Orcas are really cool okay. too. 
You know, orcas have a amygdala the size of our body. So they have an emotional like center that's like so com complex. We couldn't even perceive it. Like they have like. Wait, is an orca a dolphin? No, it's, it's technically a dolphin. It's close. Yeah. It's, it's but close. they call it a whale. Oh, okay. But it's, it's like the apex predator it kills the great white sharks. But they have these emotional systems that are like so complex. <laughs> you know a lot about them. I know a lot about them. I know a lot about them. And, and also the orcas <laughs> in like Northern California and the orcas in Southern California, like Mexico, they have different like <laughs> dialects. Wow. So the and they speak this whole language that we will never understand, they, and they don't have money, and they don't have fucking oh, jobs, yeah. and they're fucking have the whole <laughs> ocean. Fuck it, who's the idiots? We're have the you, fucking dummies. Have you heard of? There's actually dolphin assisted uh, dolphin assisted birthing, and they made it illegal. Word. And actually, these babies would come out like being like genius because these dolphins would put <laughs> echolocation into the baby. <laughs> I'm serious. Dude. That's what I want to do. There you go. I'm going to have a baby yeah. with dolphins. <laughs> it's tight as fuck. i have a baby with dolphins. There you go. They're going to give my baby echolocation. It's going to be a genius. It's tight as fuck. I like that. Love it. It's intuitive. All right. Here's yours. Okay. So the firefly, inspired and fantastic, yet fleeting. The firefly contains the light of a thousand stars. It's pure, radiant, and illuminating. This high frequency charge cannot be sustained for long. Therefore, the Firefly card indicates a moment of inspiration or awakening that quickly fades if we do not catch it. There is a Firefly energy behind every poem, song, and invention. Our job is to create and be ready to harness this creative spirit when it graces our path. What can you do to support this precious and elusive light? When in balance, writes, creates, brainstorms. When out of balance, burnt out, feels dull. To bring into balance, write a poem. Draw. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. I, so I've, I have very, I have experience of you, but very limited experience of you. I don't know you on day to day. Maybe you chime in. Do you keep the same energy every day? <sighs> That no, I do not, and I don't hold myself to <laughs> I'm laughing, the sorry. perfection. You don't hold yourself. To I the don't perfection. hold myself to the perfection. And one thing I've learned is that expecting to be top-notch energy all day is unrealistic. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes my biggest leap in performance is to stop everything and to pause and to rest to recover yeah. slow is down to, play. to speed up yeah slow down to speed up and a lot of people call that being lazy some people call that being that's a, complacent that's a, that's a judgment and again yes that's a judgment and oftentimes my most brilliant ideas came from just meditating and yeah. sitting for an hour not doing anything and so honoring that and how much value it holds it creates a piercing effect to this idea that real energy is not force. Real energy is not being constantly on the grind because that can feel resistance and it's driven through anger and fear. So real energy is to me it is excitement it's joy it's bliss it's play it's love and, but it's also peace it's just being and i'm grateful to be able to to know that to just be aware of that and my intention is is always to share that your your highest performance is when you let go of just being it all about yourself or even just only having it be about others. It's, it's how do I integrate this into receiving and giving at the same time. I find my my real energy is like my my best is in flow, not not mm. when I'm in like not even in production. Like when I'm like charging ahead, mm -hmm. it's when I'm in like mm. stream of life mm. is when I get the most done. Like when mm. I'm waking up at the natural. Like this morning, I woke up at five a.m. naturally. Like mm. worked on my book naturally, went to the gym and just flowed through the day. And I find when I'm doing that, there's very little resistance. That's the best feeling. You know, it's, inspired action. Yeah, it's just that that's where I find I'm most uh, effective. I think mm. that's when you know you're not aligned with something. 
if it feels super draining or Definitely. if it feels like work. Yeah. Mm. That's what I, my goal is always to be doing things that don't feel like work. <laughs> my life doesn't feel like work. <laughs> yeah. I, if you yeah. call, when, when you call me and I say, what do you do? Like, yeah. say, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my friends are like, what the hell do you do? Yeah. Yeah. How do you make <laughs> money? My, friend, my friends say to me all the time, they're like, what do you do? Um, <laughs> you get paid for that? Yeah. What? <laughs> like people pay you to give you advice and listen to you? I'm chilling. And listen That's to them? <laughs> Like they, you just talk words and they pay you. Like, how does that work? Yeah, my parents were like, "People take your advice. <laughs> <laughs> People pay you and then to what do take you say? your advice." What do you say back to them? I say, "Fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Me a good yeah, amount of money too. Lot, too." <laughs> They're just mind boggled. It's just, yeah. it's hard to wrap the mind around around that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's uh, when you know things, you know things, and. Is teacher everybody can be a teacher? I'm you know unemployable. I mean? I'm unemployable I'm too. Unemployable. I am unemployable. Yeah. I, I, I say that in meetings we all the time. I'm like, common. I'm so unemployable. <laughs> I've, I've been, I'm I've been fired. Then. I've been fired from so many jobs. I was like, in 2017, I was like, nope, <laughs> all done. Never again. Never mm -hmm. again. I'm just not getting fired yeah, anymore. Yeah. It's, like, it's almost yeah. hard to go back too. I'm like, never going back. And you get a taste of. I, I was gonna say chocolate. <laughs> so you're gonna taste the chocolate. <laughs> you can't go back. <laughs> For real, man. For real. How do you just stick with vanilla? Yeah. Well, you gotta have all the flavors <laughs> to know try. what you love. Yeah. yeah. The most. Can't, you it's, can't go back. No, that was like I me. Know. I was a teacher, elementary education. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then I did door to door sales, but I made my own schedule. I took off when I wanted. There was yeah. no cap. And like that freedom. I was like, I uh, want this forever. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, a lot of years I was broke and I was like, I'd rather be broke than, and grind it out. Oh, I even tried to be in a cubicle cause I was so curious. Yeah. That's a no for About me. What? I just what it's like to, <laughs> oh. Oh, to work a in a cubicle. <laughs> that's a, that's just a so a curious. I was like, I'm going to try it for one week. I, I'm too weird for it, man. They'd be like, why is he talking so fast? <laughs> well, like, why I feel is like he... I was in the office. <laughs> the actual experience of that is is almost an out of body experience especially if you're spiritual because it's almost like you're aware of of what's driving people and it's it's interesting to see how we put on these masks sometimes when you talk i feel like people. i just took acid <laughs> that's people say that about me that's too. that's what i hear sometimes yeah. <laughs> and it's 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 alarming it's alarming to know that this is something that just is people's lives and at no point do they wake up and realize oh my god I've, i'm asleep so, i mean we had that experience i had that experience i don't know if you both had that experience working in a cubicle and it's so it's so uh, pe um, alarming in a way and well, it's so peaceful at the same time because you're like i deserve so much more than this well i realized that some people actually they prefer, prefer that. Prefer it, yeah. They prefer that. The security, the, the mindlessness. <laughs> the false sense of security. Yeah. It's, it's not even a false... No. Well, it is. It's it is. a false like reality. COVID, people realize it was an illusion because oh, of yeah. COVID. You're it's because, right. really like, they joined a corporation which they thought was secure, and then COVID hits, and yeah. everyone loses their jobs. Right. And they're like, oh, shit, how do I trust these corporations, yeah. these companies? And what I say is the asset is you. Yeah. Why, why do we put so much value into our employers mm. into these corporations when it's like i'm the value i'm yeah, the asset like i'm irreplaceable baby <laughs> <laughs> let's go <laughs> she's got stories yeah. about how she went into a company and was telling them that unless they gave her the full reign <laughs> oh, I, I created my own position and she in a created major her own position yeah. solar company director of partner development just because i was like i'm not <laughs> Doing yeah. anything yeah. that anyone else and they is were doing. like well you don't see this every day yeah <laughs> wow nikki van houten you're hard well, you never know what you, like and also i've told a lot of my friends to ask this too ask for promotions raises ask to be able to work from home and so many times they come back to me and they're like nikki they said yes yeah. it's like why don't more people yeah. just, ask? just ask i think it's because they don't realize that they they just get to ask <laughs> asking you shall receive but people don't even ask yeah why? how do you even why do you think Eric? why do i think people don't ask, no. why, why do people a, not ask? um 
I think it's a worthiness thing mm. and like a, a lack of confidence and assertiveness and mm. belief in self, mm. you know, and not wanting to rock the boat. Or fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. Oh, yeah, fear I of rejection. But I think that's a word in this conversation oh, yeah, itself. Yeah. I believe sure. that fear of rejection is, it's a trick. It's a trick because rejection is something that you can get. you have to take in as truth. And people don't realize there's this invisible wall of like, oh, I agree with your truth. <laughs> because they say, oh, what you're saying is the truth. Oh, oh damn. Oh, darn it. I'm rejected. It's like, wait, hold on a second. You just literally gave up your sovereignty. You gave up your ability to choose. I yeah. agree with this truth and I don't agree with this truth because we all get conditioned to seek authority to give us certainty in life. Definitely. It's, it's unconscious. I even did it with my first life coach and I just was almost, it was like I was codependent on yeah. him because I didn't realize what was happening. Yeah. What was, was the like, worst rejection you've ever experienced? <sighs> The worst rejection I experienced was when you wouldn't eat my when you wouldn't eat food butt. that I had made. <laughs> when you wouldn't eat his ass. <laughs> she wouldn't eat my asshole. And she wouldn't eat my, my, I eat my, my sack. <laughs> He's like, I will yeah. definitely eat your butt. You just never asked. I, I actually have never asked that before. So now you know. That's something new that we get to explore okay. together. Now you know. But Perfect. moving Can right along. Can I put along, peanut butter on it first? Of course. Okay. That's... That's what I was thinking, actually. <laughs> They'll be back in Austin. So, <laughs> as eaten. So, <laughs> <laughs> moving right along, I was thinking to myself, I, I was thinking, oh, you know what? I would love to create this opportunity for my band to, to play in this venue. And it was a venue was your band in name? Boston, The Dudes. <laughs> D-O-O-D-S. Cool. Real talk. And they rejected us. We did a whole audition too. We played three songs. We crushed it. Everyone was clapping. And yet the the owner of the venue said that we were too young. He said, you're too young. We can't have you come here because we're not allowed to have people under 21. I think that's so, the worst rejection when you get excited about something. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, it excited and when, when you have all these expectations, expectations. and yeah. you're not you living from intention, yeah. you're not, because every, every person that I know who has broken through, everyone hated them, hated on them and totally second guessed their power. And they really stood in their truth. They stood in their intention. And even the dude who broke the four minute mile, no one had done it physically before. And he said, no, you know what? This is totally possible. And he did it. And then two weeks later, 14 people did it. So it's just about that psychological barrier, which is yeah. not easy to break. That's the power of the collective conscious. Yes. That's like yes. once it's done that you've heard it. Did you hear that study where they gave out, um, uh, crossword puzzles. Um, they gave like crossword, crossword puzzles that have already been completed. And like this control group, like, flew through them and everybody completed them and then they gave out crossword puzzles that have never been done and like this group then finished them and then they gave them out to the rest of the like the wow. public and then everybody fucking finished them like it was like once they were completed in like this this like container the, yeah. everybody else was able to figure them out wow. mm. you know what i mean mm. it's like it was in the universe it's so interesting too when you like see what's possible then that's when people actually can accomplish yeah. huge things definitely you know, like, especially like in my life, I think me showing my friends and family what is possible in my life, what I've accomplished and the life I've created, it's really inspired just from my being. I think in the past, I used to like kind of force personal development and growth on my family and friends. Mm -hmm. And I realized that pushed people away. Yeah, from people me. don't like that. People don't like that. Yeah. And now for me, just being embodied in myself and just from my being mm -hmm. people are inspired definitely, mm. and they see what's possible mm. definitely inspiring yeah it's wonderful yeah mm. so sure. talk let's talk about your relationship because you guys have a, uh, a a term you 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 use for it what, what is that term conscious couple conscious yeah. talk couple. about what does that mean 
Conscious couple. Conscious. There's so many. 47 answers just came into my mind. Conscious pe- companionship, partnership, so, whatever the fuck. <laughs> conscious, it sounds cool. Conscious sounds couple cool to is, to me, and we've had this conversation before about codependency and interdependency. So there's, it's almost like there's three levels. So obviously at the bottom is nobody wants to be there, which is I'm this victim. There's no one out there for me, blah, blah, blah. And then you get to this next level of, and that's where a lot of the codependency is. And then the next level is independence where you learn how to fly and flow security and be, yeah, be Be secure within yourself, be connected to your heart, be connected to your purpose. And it reminds me of when I was in a codependent relationship and I got my heart quote unquote broken. I'm doing the quote unquote so people can (laughs) understand. (laughs) And (laughs) yeah, word. And if to me, it was not my breaking of the heart because I realized I'm still here, I'm still alive. It was an opportunity for me to listen to my heart and to say, hey, what's my highest truth? What's what's expansive to me? And how do I understand who I am and, and what my purpose here in life is to be? How can I love myself deeper and find out about the ego, et cetera, consciousness? And then through that development of myself, I became a person who could be that energy, that vortex of, of energy that could hold the space for someone to, to, to be in my life and to give me good feelings that I don't need to be happy, but they're good feelings regardless. So it's contributive, it's not dependent. And so then what I ascended into and what I've always been continuing to build towards as well um, in my life and also in my partnership with Nikki is interdependence. So it's, it's like two people who don't need each other to be the, like happy, the one plus one right equals three. Mm-hmm. it's it's like 50 like percent plus 50 percent equals zero but 100 percent plus 100 percent and that's is taking full ownership bird mode and that's like, like the talk, number one two wings of a bird number one mm-hmm. key is taking full ownership that 100 percent 100 percent and that's so fascinating because of especially the leadership academy that we've been going through as yeah, I've been talking about them on the us. podcast yeah. for a week. So they know. Okay, good, good, good. I didn't want to cross promote. No, they, they all know. <laughs> so, so we've been learning, especially the people, like from our vantage point, from Nikki and I's vantage point, we've had a unique experience. We, we did our best to have our own unique experience, but you gotta, we get to admit that it's different. It's unique to people who just come in here as uh, single. And so what we've been understanding is that when we were alone, we were so like, fuck yeah let's go like we know what we need to work on we know what we need to develop within ourselves we know our shadows and we can build towards improving that transforming it but when you're in a relationship it's so easy to let your let that down and let go of that ownership because the other person being there it's almost like their strengths can let you off the hook from improving that within yourself give you a perfect example so i'm very flowy would you agree? Yeah. <laughs> right. Like I know how I'm expressive, flowy, and I've always had that connection to my inner child, that that uh, I guess you could say feminine energy, and obviously that's not related to gender. It's just the, the way mm-hmm. of energy it is. We've had podcasts on it. They yeah. Know, they know and and that's something that I leaned on a lot to become successful in some way, shape, or form, and so something that I was working on improving was the structure was the process was the the masculine energy of that groundedness and that presence and so through being in relationship with nikki she actually is so fucking powerful in that area like she's got so many amazing like you're you're an incredible <laughs> baby and she's got such an incredible ability to plan and to systematize and to organize on top of that Even incredibly those words sound creative very- <laughs> yeah so so <laughs> it's medicine for me right it's medicine for me because i see someone who's not even a man this is a, a woman who's demonstrating the power of of that energy right that we all have within us mm-hmm. and so it's been a really amazing journey to face my shadows um in a deeper level through the power of relationship 
through the power of someone loving you enough to to call you out on things that you Beautiful. intended to create for yourself and yet you're you're dropping the ball and it's humbling and, and it's inspiring at the same time and I it's think, exciting i think it's pretty yeah, obvious it too like i think i said this a couple of months ago like it's easier to be alone Mm -hmm. it, <laughs> is. it is actually i've been alone for a couple months like, sounds pretty easy like i'm saying you don't get as triggered when you're mm -hmm. alone but that's not the point yeah like if you don't want to be triggered like <laughs> you, you don't want to go sit on the himalayan mountains <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you know but it's like that's so not true. what this experience is about and both of us are committed to growth and i was really calling in someone to build an empire and really support me and have like be on the same mission and have a very right. similar vision so that's why with us not only did we dive into things into our relationship but we're now business partners so we have a group coaching program and just navigating that as well <laughs> you feel good about it yeah it's so much fun we have mm. so much fun awesome mm -hmm. yeah. so let's i want to know as a <laughs> what are you laughing at i feel like you're gonna ask something weird no no <laughs> it's okay just be you Eric. no what, 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 be you. what could i have asked something about sex no i don't give a fuck about your sex life i'm not are gonna scared i'm not gonna <laughs> yuck to, your to, yuck to, is he gonna to talk reveal. about you eating his ass <laughs> that was one joke well you can eat you can eat many things you <laughs> know there's many things as long as it's Damn. edible do i give off those vibes <laughs> biodegradable <laughs> <laughs> that's feedback <laughs> feedback eric that's feedback, feedback. But it's it's the look it's, it's the look <laughs> it's the look thanks um okay. What uh, what have you learned in your process uh, about rela your relationship mm. in, in the process that we've been going through? What process? Damn, right. Ascension Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to relationships, it, what's been what's been <laughs> manifesting in your relationship? For me, I I didn't realize how much I played the victim, mm. and I didn't realize too what, when. We get in arguments with people. We're pretty much being like, "I'm the bigger victim. I'm the victim. No, oh, I'm wow. the victim." We're we're almost like fighting for the victim trophy. Yeah. And Ascension Leadership Academy has helped me to just shine the light of awareness on that I I have played the victim, and that has been a survival mechanism for me throughout my life. And so instead of playing the victim, taking responsibility. You know, when Theo says something that hurts my feelings, instead of crying and, and throwing a fuss and making a big deal about do you, it. Do you cry easily? What would you say? In life in general, not only I with him. I'll let you answer that I one, wouldn't baby. say I cry a lot. I would say I definitely can react. And like, I, I actually, I have a tendency of walking away. Yeah, you walk. Like running shut away, down. shut it down. Yeah, <laughs> Get on a down. plane, go to Tulum. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> You're out of here. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, just like conscious communication, sharing this is what happened. No story. This is what happened. This is how it made me feel. This is the story that I created about this. I take ownership of this story and I'm committed to creating a relationship of, you know, to, coming back to the intention. Right so that's really supported me taking ownership of the stories that I create. I mean, she went to Tulum and we f she found me. So Where? she just be going <laughs> to find another. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, you're the one. Baby. I'm just messing. You're the one. But I, all in all seriousness, and I'm serious right now. Can't you tell? <laughs> Can't you tell in my voice? I'm so serious. <laughs> Seriousness. Hold on a second. All Matt, jokes Matt, aside. Matt, on time. 30 minutes. Look how the time Ooh, flies. Look too. at that. Wow. It's just got the sign language. I love that. Yeah. That's, we could talk to Matt epic. all we want. He's not hiding. What up, Matt? Love you, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would say, yeah, it feels good to to gain acceptance over judgment. I tend to be very self-righteous. Mm, I tend too. to be very fucking self-righteous. And I, I, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know that about myself through my own acceptance of people who love me enough to tell me the fucking truth. Me too. I see and it. I see it in you because I'm self-righteous too. I'm we're so, mirrors, I'm so bro. wise. I'm yeah. so wise, don't yeah. you know? I like levitate. But at the same time, it's like yeah. sometimes, you know, people like you and I and, and Nikki too, like we read books, you know, like we read, we read things we fucking... that people <laughs> who have created some level of epic success have dedicated a we large have portion of their lives we about to <laughs> communicate that to the world. And when we're 
communicating what we've learned, sometimes people can be intimidated and it's okay. It's not our business to, to be afraid of, of that it, it, because otherwise what? We're just people pleasing. We're just, I just want to be liked by everybody. Yeah. That's, that's my, just that's not true. You me. can't be liked by everybody. I want to be palatable. Like that's. Yeah. I want to be loved or Grounded, hated. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. be like, meh. Yeah. Yeah. Who's that person? Sometimes too woo woo is a lot for me. It can yeah. be like mm. I'm like a, I'm like I'm a balance. I'm, a balance I'm like too. low key woo woo. Yeah. Yeah. I do not crystals. look like I'm in a Palo Santo sage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm low key. You would never guess. Yeah. I'm actually called to being a medicine woman. Are you? I have, yeah, I have yeah, a lot yeah. of medicine. Women I'm studying friends. with a woman. Her name's Zahara Zimring. Actually, Theo and I are going to Colorado to do a mushroom ceremony with her. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's changed my life. Psychedelics. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about it. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking she, about it. it. Well, you're amazing. <laughs> we <can talk laughs> That's about, all I gotta we say. Can talk about your experience. Yeah, I, yeah. I maybe psych- time. I love psychedelics. I'm a big fan. I was just actually on a symposium um, this weekend about psychedelics and recovery. Oh, so was my um, friend. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because being being in the recovery space and like like I'm speaking at a recovery conference in. Uh, the weekend that's of, amazing that people that are in recovery like can still do this no they can't no it's stigmatized um, it's like no don't do it at, at um, all don't talk about it don't do it you're not sober you're not in recovery oh, like judgment hella hella <laughs> so it's like um yeah i'm yeah i i i don't know how i feel about it i don't know how i feel about it because yeah, I'm a proponent. I've never had nothing but great experiences. And for me, like, and I'll talk, I'm, I'm writing my book right now. The manuscript will be done in December. Okay. Um, and I take a lot of medication. Yeah. And some of the medication, like, creates gray matter in the brain, and, like, gives me, like, muscle twitches and, like, really fucks with me. Really, yeah. it's, it's, like, going to kill me one day, mm-hmm. you know. And then that's fine to, like, a lot of people in our community, you know. But then psychedelics who that provide this complete opposite ex- ex- not even euphoric but a complete healing experience mm-hmm. that, that create new neural pathways and heal the brain and mm-hmm. like yeah not, mm-hmm. not only on a metaphysical level but on like a neurological level and like mm-hmm. a, you know like combo and and it's cleansing I, I tell people i do combo that's fine um i haven't had psychedelic experiences like deep ones in recovery but like you know, it's it's. I'm a proponent. You yeah, know it's I mean? just another tool. Yeah, yeah I'm for I'm it. I'm so mm-hmm. grateful mm-hmm. for all of these tools, yeah. and I feel such a passion to share it. You know, when you taste a good recipe or watch a really good movie, yeah, the mm. first thing you want to do is share it. Yeah, mm. like, wow. I, I I wish it was. I want to be the one with my book to open people up to it because yeah. it's. Um, it's it's a lot it should be allowed you know yeah. and on the on the symposium i was on i had like all these doctors from ucla and i, I kept like raising my hand and putting my hand yeah. down and i was like okay okay <laughs> i had to fucking do this one. i'm like yo like we're ta- right now you're talking about all this medication these are all psychiatrists that are speaking i'm like you're talking about all these medications that really that not in, not pretend but these there's active statistics that these medications kill people people kill themselves on these medications that you prescribe on a day-to-day basis like candy and we're now we're looking at psychedelics whether they're appropriate for people in recovery that have never killed anybody that actually like provide life-changing experiences and you're questioning their validity it's so interesting how the government mm. and like the fda don't want us to no they they want they want you sleeping (laughs) and and that (laughs) they want you just chomping pills so that you feel good now it's fucked man it's it's, it is what it is. Short term gain. Yeah, it's real. It's, <laughs> it's real fucked. Yeah, um, maybe. <laughs> short term gain. Let me get those short term <laughs> gains. Let me lift those five pound dumbbells forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's uh. Come on. It's an interesting paradigm, but it's gonna shift. It's gonna shift, I think, oh, yeah. and uh, I, and more people do mushrooms, and yeah, become yeah. a medicine woman and heal heal as many people as you can, mm-hmm. take as many people through experiences mm-hmm. as you can. Mm-hmm. because yeah and it's so in- there's a, a book called stealing fire hmm. and i noticed this when i was living in san jose with silicon valley that a lot of startup companies are starting to utilize yeah. psychedelics mm. definitely like microdosing yeah microdosing mm. yeah that's or, or taking 
I'll just fold those to the office. Just <laughs> <Just trip vaults. laughs> Let's go to the meditation it's, it's center. Let's come up with a new solar panel. <laughs> yeah, let's make it happen. Watts. Yeah. Black on black. Black on black on black. Yeah, I that's what I used to sell. Yeah. Solar panel. Yeah, I know. It's I, it's so it's so odd <laughs> I know, to think so of you doing odd. that. Imagine me at your door. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm your solar advisor for the neighborhood. <laughs> I see you don't have solar panels. <laughs> so, so we're gonna wrap. We're gonna wrap up. But what we're gonna, how we're gonna wrap up, is we're gonna let you talk about your businesses because this kind of, this podcast can be two hours. We can do this for <laughs> so a really much long fun. time. Yeah. Super easy with you folks. So much fun. I've done some podcasts where it's like, yo, let's wrap this bitch Three up. This hours. Sucks. This I've done podcasts where like this is the worst idea ever. Like. I've been doing it for like three years Oof. and it's sometimes you have rough wow. people and you know what sometimes people who you think would be interesting are not interesting at all and some people ask me to be on their podcast and I'm like you're not really interesting <laughs> yeah. no thank you and you gotta be like nice you know what I mean um, but you guys are interesting and cool um it's like, how do you dig that out of people that aren't interesting, you know? Well, that's, that's the, that's the art, you know, <laughs> that, that's, that's the, the art. The art. Right? Yeah. And I, I'm I'm evoking. evoking and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. decent at it, but some people yeah. just aren't, they're not that interesting, <laughs> you know, and, and everybody yeah. thinks they're so interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, we all yeah. think we are. People yeah. love talking about themselves. Mm -hmm. I've had people come on here and tell stories about nothing. <laughs> Like we just talked about nothing for fucking oh forty five minutes. I must. And they were like, we could have kept going. I was like, and talked about fucking what? <laughs> Talk about life. Fucking crazy. Anyway, right. let's speak. You could speak about your businesses individually. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. catch me on Instagram at it's Nikki Van N I K I V A N, and actually, I am a a year and a half ago. I started working with Ashley Hannah Wacker, and was just doing sales for her in the beginning. And then recently I got brought on as a coach and we've created a global movement called Female on Fire. And it's really a movement of women that are on fire in every area of their life. So we have a business mastermind where we help conscious leaders, heart led leaders and entrepreneurs build up their personal brand, build a successful online business. And then we have the Female on Fire collective and inner circle. So everything in terms of like spirituality, leadership, Emotional intelligence, subconscious reprogramming, repro rewiring. So it's a lot of powerful stuff. Beautiful. And then I have, I coach myself. So my focus is NLP, neuro linguistic programming, and subconscious mind rewiring and reprogramming. Do you, do you know much about the subconscious yeah. mind? Mm -hmm. So it's formed from age zero to age seven, and it runs 90 to 95% of our life. Mm -hmm. And like 60 to 70% of those beliefs are limiting and disempowering. So really being able to create new, empowering, limitless beliefs that serve us and our vision. And it's not just like affirmational stuff. It's Work. deep hypnotherapy, um, deep processes to really get in there and do the work. Sounds powerful. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And mm. just, I mean, for me, COVID has been a blessing in disguise the past year and a half because Th this whole world is new to me. The coaching space is new to me. Is it? It you, is. I would never tell. A year and a half, yeah. I would never tell. I'm so passionate about my clients. Like, I care so much. And their wins are my wins. And I just, I want to see everyone win. I want to see everyone create the life that they dream of because that's what they deserve. Everyone's worthy of that. Absolutely. I'm really owning their desires and creating the life of their dreams yeah yeah i feel you word word <laughs> <laughs> talk about your coach theo so i am a a mentor and a guide oh yeah i like that word too guide i feel into the moment and i pay attention to my vessel and and i remove myself from being this parent and into just being this reflection so that people can really see themselves clearly first and then they can acknowledge the blind spots from how they feel and how they communicate and so through doing this type of work it's so healing to myself just as much as it is to other people and it gives me so much gratitude to see how far I've come I mean I'm I get emotional talking about this I didn't realize I was gonna be 
like feeling into that. And what I've realized is that people just want to be seen. They want to be heard. Yep, that's it. And they want to be empowered to see themselves in a new light. Mm -hmm. And so it's my mission to illuminate people's gifts yes. and to give them the permission to say, oh, what the fuck? Why not me? Who am I? Who am I not to make global impact in the world through me being me? And so expressing that fully is why I'm here. And people will make money um, through really pulling from their experiences. It's, it's everything is there. I'm just here to just say, hey, be present <laughs> and put yourself out there unapologetically and be okay with rejection. Love it. Love mistakes. Love failing. Love risking your, your self-image. And a lot of it is unconscious. Like Nikki was talking about, I'm super, just as passionate about reprogramming the words and the emotions and remembering you didn't even have to hypnotize me are. to fall in love with him oh, look at uh, that. <laughs> yeah and <laughs> and so it's the, the state of the world from my perspective is everyone is really sad everyone is really afraid you think so not everyone there's levels to this so people are sad and afraid and they don't want to feel that they don't want to feel it and ironically when you feel it you heal it <laughs> yeah. and so i want yeah i want people to feel and and transform the meaning of tr of tr of going deep transform the meaning of trauma people think of trauma and it's like the same it's like the, it's the people who say oh i don't need self-development i don't need that stuff those are the people who need it the most Right, and I was once those peep, once those peeps. So, I have compassion for those people, just because I used to think I knew it all, and I still have, <laughs> I still sometimes face that in my life where people are like, "Theo, you don't know it all." I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." At this point, I'm and, like, I know nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The more I learn, the, the more I realize. You I go, know. The deeper you go, the realize <laughs> you know very little. I, know, I, I yeah. don't know most things. Actually. Yeah. If you think about information, <laughs> yeah. I, I know a small amount of everything. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. And and here's the thing, like, I I don't really I, I identify more with someone who wants to support people with creating community like that's something that i'm really resonating with now mm -hmm. and letting go of the scarcity i'm like no like we there's so many ways that we can collaborate just like we are now and there's limitless possibilities for transformation across the the globe and so it's all from my perspective it's all just about okay how do you choose your personal brand your values your mission your vision your unique skill set and how do you like exchange that information and and people will get the result if they pay right if they actually invest energy and commitment and time into doing things their ego is like whoa but who are you gonna be if you succeed he was like no. that's the shattering of identity and that's i'm so passionate about when everyone has that i feel like we have levels of awakening where we're like oh my god so that was the story that was running my life that was the conversation that was literally dictating my feelings which dictated my behaviors which dictated or reflected back to me what i deeply believe about myself about people and about life itself so, I mean, I could go on and on about this. How did they find you on Instagram? How do they find me? <laughs> they find me through <laughs> the Theo Cummings official. That's my Instagram. And my website is theocummings.com. Um, you know, we have experiences for coaches who want to scale their brands. We have experiences for entrepreneurs who want to express themselves fully and heal deeply through the quantum expression mastermind run by nikki and myself and so many opportunities that nikki and i have manifested serving in retreats across the globe and it's like wow i'm so grateful i'm so grateful and we share it we share a, a vision in common which is really creating a world of heaven on earth 
Beautiful. Like nowhere to get to. Beautiful. This is it. This I love is what it. you love guys that. are doing. Yeah. Folks, I love yeah, what you folks are doing. 2021. Thank you. I don't want to miss gender I love you. either. Thank you for having us on. I love you love both. You. you guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you for hours. Yeah, yeah right? Hours. All right, let's wrap this bitch up. All right, thanks. Um, if you've listened to the way. Do a little beatbox. Do a little beatbox. And I'll, 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 I'll finish and you do that over it. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, subscribe, share it. We want to shoot laser beams at you. Um, go to YouTube channel. Subscribe, blah, 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 blah. We out.